Question 3 then from the 2022 Higher Maths Paper 2, 7 mark question. You recognise that immediately. That's that wave equation question. You've got these two terms, one's a sine, one's a cosine, but it's the same angle. And you have to write it in the form of a single sine or cosine. Well, it's called the wave equation because what you've got is you've got a sine wave of a certain amplitude and you've got a cosine of a slightly bigger amplitude. And when you add these two together, they produce a new wave with an even higher amplitude, but it's been shifted. It's been shifted either forward or backwards, depending whether you want to call it a sine or a cosine. Anyway, notice it's not in degrees. There's no degree signs. It's in radians. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing. You should just get used to using your calculator and putting the answer down in radians. Although there is. It's quite understandable. If you've got something like 45.1, say, which is in degrees, or you've got something like 0 0.723, I'm not saying they're the same thing, which is in radians. Somehow that just looks much more friendlier than that. I'd much rather add up loads of these or subtract these than add up loads of these. Although it should be the same thing, they've both just got three figures in them. Well, I suppose that's got the extra wee zero. But then that's got the extra little zero up there as well. So they've actually got the same things in each of them. But that's going to be the main problem here. It's not the fact that you've got the wave equation. It's not really the fact it's in radians. It's the fact that you're going to have loads of decimals, especially in part B. Writing down these decimals, you have to be careful with decimals. Because the decimals you're going to be getting are decimals that are going forever. So they need to be rounded off. And you have to watch out for rounding off errors. Take two numbers. Say I take the number 0 point whatever. 4045 and so on and the number 3134 and so on. Those ellipses just means that's still the exact value. They've not been rounded off. If you were to put them down as answers, that first one would go down as 0 0.405, rounded correct to three significant figures, or three decimal places. That would go down as 0 0.313. Now, if you were to subtract those, that answer would be 0 0.29. 0 0.092, when in fact if you were to subtract them, that's 1190. That's 0 0.091, not 0 0.092. It's nowhere near the two, look, it's only 1, 1. It's not even 1, 3 or 1, 4. Now that doesn't happen all the time. More often than not, they do produce the right answer, but you will also get cases where you'll have what's called a rounding error, which means in this question, since it's in radians, you should really be given radians to three decimal places. That's the same accuracy as having degrees to one decimal place. Remember, a radian is a big chunk of a circle. It's called a radian because the arc that subtends that angle of one radian is the same length as the radius. So obviously that's quite close to an equilateral triangle, radius, 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 which would be 60 degrees, but that's closed up a bit because that's bulged out. So it's just a bit less than 60 degrees, which means one decimal place of a degree, a tenth of a degree is a tenth of a sixtieth of a radian. That's a six hundredth. So that's nearly a thousand. So that's three decimal places. Now what that means is if you want your answers to have three decimal places, the working prior to the answer should really have four to avoid a rounding error. So if for some reason you've got an answer of 2.71828 and so on, which you may recognise, and you wanted that to four decimal places before you got to the answer when you round it off, there's two ways you could write that down. If that's what appeared in your calculator, you could either put 2.7182 and put the ellipsis. Now what that means is those are the four, first four decimal places but I've still got the whole thing stored somewhere, maybe in the answer function, or maybe if you've been fancy in one of the other memories in your calculator, but it's still all there, so it's completely accurate. If instead of that, you write 2.718 and round it off three, that's now without the ellipsis, that means that's the rounded off answer. That's it correct to four decimal places, but you've lost the rest, it's now gone. So it all depends what you're doing. Have you got it? Have you kept it? Put that down. Have you rounded it off? Just use that. If there's loads of calculations to do, you're probably as well just rounding it off to save you having to put the dot, dot, dot. So, back to the actual question then, because all that decimals was really for part B. 
Right, if this has to be expressed in this form, it means you need to find what A and K are. Somehow you've got to find A and K from the numbers 4 and 5. So if they're meant to be equal, the only way I can equate this side to this side is if that side looks exactly like that side, and it doesn't. But you can make it look the same. If you go to the front, you'll find the, one of the trigonometrical formulae, the compound angle formula, which lets you expand this. And that becomes sine x cos a, remembering to use the x and the a, not the a's and b's or c's or d's or whatever it says at the front, plus swap over cos x sine a. I kept the k outside, because if k multiplies something, it multiplies all of what it becomes. Now I'm going to pop it inside. Now you could have popped it inside to begin with, but I'd rather pop it inside in a different order, because I want this to look like that. I want to see some number of sine x, some number of cos x. Well, there's the sine x, so I'll put them first. k cos a sine x, because it doesn't matter which order you put three factors down. But then usually for a term, you put it in the order of coefficient, which is the constant part, times the variable part. Same here, case to multiply this. I'll reshuffle them to read k sine a cos x. And again, I'll put a bracket around there unnecessarily, but just to make that stand out. Now those two things look the same. Doing that gets the first mark. Now you didn't have to rearrange them into that order. All you needed to have was the k in both parts. But I would think that's, that's, that's the best order because you're wanting to do a comparison. Now you can make the comparison. So what's in front of sine x? Now it says the cos, so I'd rather do it the other way around. I'll rather do this one first. I know that's the first one that catches your eye because you read that way. What's in front of cos x? 5. What's in front of cos x? k sine a. So k sine a equals 5. Now, this one. What's in front of sine? 4. What's in front of sine? k cos a. And that's 4. Now doing that gets a mark. I did it that way around just because the way that you solve what you've now got is a pair of simultaneous equations, two equations and two variables. The way you solve that is by squaring them and dividing them. And when you divide them, you'll get a tangent. So that's why I wanted to have the sine here and the cosine there, so it looked more like that. So now solving them to find the k and the a. Well, the technique for finding k is this. If you take the two equations and square them, I know you probably don't put this down, you just probably jump in with the next line, but this is where it comes from. The way you can get rid of the a's is, if you square the equations, you'll have k squared sine squared, you'll have k squared cos squared, and if you add them together, you'll have k squared times sine squared plus cos squared, which is just 1. And then the other side becomes 5 squared plus 4 squared. So k squared will be 25 and the 16, which is 41. So k is root 41. Now it could be plus or minus root 41, but it's plus because it said k is greater than 0. So that gets a mark. Now the other part. How do we get to the a? How do you get rid of k? Divide them. If you do 1 divided by 2, you'll have sine over cos, which becomes tan. So tan of a will be 5 upon 4, which means that a is going to be inverse tan of 5 upon 4. So it's just one place left for the answer. Now we come to the part. So, so far there's been no decimals. Now we hit the radians. Now we hit the decimals. But there's only the one answer, so there wouldn't be all those rounding problems yet. Well, inverse tan of 5 upon 4. Now, you could do that secretly in degrees if you like. The answer has to be radians. But you could work it out in degrees if you like. But for all the difference it makes, you know, working it out in degrees, you then have to divide by 180 and multiply by pi and round it off to get the answer. You're as well just starting off with radians. So just make sure it's in radians. Just make sure you go to mode, whatever it is in your calculator. I've got four here. So it's in radians. And then you can do your inverse tan of, and I'll use the refraction button here, 5 over 4. I'll just pop that out, put a bracket in, which you don't really need. And you get an answer. You get this answer. I'll just put a note of it. 0 0.8960 and so on. Notice that means I've still got the whole answer if I need it because it's still stored in the calculator. If I'd scrubbed that and done something else, I'd probably have rounded that off to 8.96, which 
would have gone to at 8, 9, 6, 1 then, because it's a 5 that's next, or 5 plus a bit. But anyway, so that's the acute angle, but where does it go? Right, whole sine tan cos. Simultaneous equations. Both of these have to be solved at the same time. Both of these have to be satisfied at the same time. The sine has to be, remember, case positive. So that doesn't affect the signs. The sine has to be positive. So it means it's either in one of those two quadrants. The cosine has to be positive. So it's in one of those two quadrants. So where is A if it's got to keep both of them happy? It can only be in the first quadrant. And that's what that was. 0.896 is an acute angle. In radians, in degrees it goes to 180, in radians it goes to pi, which is 3.14. So halfway at 90, which is the top of the acute part, that'll be half of that, so that'll be 1.57. So if it's under 1.5, you know it's definitely an acute angle. So that's your answer. Zero point, but now I'm putting down a final answer, I'm going to put down the first correct to the first three decimal places. That gets the mark. Part B, hence, not hence or otherwise, hence, because you're going to be using this result from part A, hence solve this equation. X is to be between 0 and 2 pi. So you're not going to be writing that, your answers forever. Well, the way that you would solve that equation would be, first of all, get them down to a single sign or cos. Well, there it's there. You know this already from part A. There wasn't any attempt at a disguise. That's exactly what you had. So you just write down what you had in part A. Root 41 sine, now this is where we're going to differ a bit, because this is all the problem now about the decimals. So you would probably just put 0 0.896, but that's not a final answer. There was a final answer there in part A, but that's not a final answer. So for me, I'm going to be using four decimal places. So if I was to go back and find that again, it was still in there, it was 055, etc. I'm going to write down 8961. Put in, you can get away with just by doing 896 because I don't think they mind. Looking at the marking scheme, in the marking scheme it said something along the lines of as long as what you've got for your final answer, I think it is, rounds off correctly to one decimal place, then it'll be accepted. That doesn't mean put down just one decimal place because one decimal place, a tenth of a radian is a huge chunk. No, it means that as long as what you've got down would round off so it's still the same to just one decimal place it would be okay, which basically means they're going to ignore rounding errors. So you could just work with three throughout. But I'm going to do it properly and work with four if I want three as my final answer. So that's why I've put this down. But you could probably just put down the 896, but I'm always going to be putting down one more until I get to my final answer. Now doing that gets a mark. Not having the one there, just doing that, writing down what you had before. Now you start getting rid of the bits and pieces. So sine x plus 0 0.8961 will be 5.5 divided by root 41, which means that x plus 0 0.8961 will be inverse sine of... Now you could change that to a decimal, but you best not to. You've got enough problems with decimals as they are. So just leave it like that, leaves it exact. Now there'll be two answers to this. So for that, I'll need to find what the acute angle is because I can see it's a positive amount. So one will be here and one will be here. But what is this acute angle? So that's where a calculator will come in. So as before, you type that in and you press equals and you get the answer 1.0332 and so on. No, I mean, I've still got it in my calculator. So the two answers would be either that itself or all the way around is pi. It's either that or pi minus it. So it's 1.0332, because there's only a 2 next, or it's pi minus it, which will just, will just take pi away from that rather than doing the minus, which is, and then ignore the negative sign, 2.10836 to 2.1084. Just putting it down to four decimal places. That gets a mark. However, you've put it down. You notice in the marking scheme it'll say 1.033 dot 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 ellipsis. 
2.108 dot 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 because that's the full amount whereas that's them rounded off to four decimal places but you may well just have rounded them off to three decimal places because I think you're allowed to get away with that and then finally just take that across and subtract now will I show the subtraction? Oh, I've said it Zero, three. So that's why it's just tedious, isn't it? Minus 0 0.8961, or it's going to be 2.1084. I don't think you need to actually show this subtraction, as long as you've just carried it out. So I'm going to subtract it. Now I can put down my final answers. Well, that's got a 1 in the last place when I subtract them, so I can forget that. So it's just going to be the 7 part onwards. 0 0.137, and for the other one, 1. 0.212. That gets the last mark. So you could see here there wouldn't have been any rounding errors because keeping the full amount in, the fourth figure was just a 1. Same here, the fourth figure was just a 3. It wouldn't have affected what you had for the first three figures. Now it's quite tedious putting down the extra decimal place but it's, strictly speaking, what you're meant to do, especially later on. Not in the exam, but later on, you know, university and so on.